Hey, beautiful beaters. It's Gina from Orchid and Opal.com. And today we are going to be making this graduated flat spiral necklace design. If you are newer to bead weaving or never have done flat spiral stitch before, I do have a beginner's tutorial for a basic flat spiral stitch that I will link in the corner. And I would encourage you to check that one out first. This one's a little bit more challenging, but not too difficult. It does combine elements of bead weaving and bead stringing all together to get this very elegant result. Everything you need to make this beautiful necklace is available at EurekaCrystalBeads.com and you can use the code ORCHID15 to save 15% off your purchase with them with some exclusions that I will list down below. Also down below, I will have all the specifics as far as the links that will take you directly to their site to each of these products that I'm using today. So let's talk about the materials that you will need to make this necklace. You're gonna need some Swarovski pearls or any pearls will do. I'm using the iridescent Tahitian from EurekaCrystalBeads.com and you will need four sizes. You'll need four, six, eight, and 10 millimeter pearls. Again, all the specific quantities will be down below. You also need some Swarovski crystal bicones or any bicones in the four and six millimeter sizes, some size 11 seed beads. You will need some bead stringing wire. I'm using the soft flex antique brass in the medium size, which is the 0 0.019 diameter. I would recommend you not go any thicker than that because you will be going through some tighter spaces. In addition, to that you'll also need your bead weaving thread. I recommend the Fireline 0 0.006 millimeter size or the six pound. You will also need some crimp tubes, some crimp covers, two jump rings at least, a clasp of your choice, and I recommend using two wire guards. I will also be using a size 10 beading needle and a pair of scissors and jewelry pliers. So go ahead and thread your needle with about 10 feet of beading thread and we're going to start by making this front beaded portion. All right, so once you have your needle threaded, my recommendation is that you go ahead and lay out the front portion of your bead. So as you can see, I'm using six of the 10 millimeter rounds. Right at the front, I'm using three eight millimeters on either side of that, and then three six millimeter rounds on either side of that. I'm using 10 four millimeter bicones on either side of the larger six millimeter bicones. And up front, I have 14 of those six millimeter bicones. So go ahead and lay that out. If you'd like to, that will let you know while you're beating what you're gonna be picking up next. All right, the first step in this process is we wanna pick up two of our six millimeter beads and go ahead and string those on your needle and bring them down to the end of your thread, but leave yourself about 10 inches back there just in case. Now what you want to do is you want to surround these two six millimeter beads with seed beads. So you're going to pick up four 11 seed beads, pick up one of your four millimeter bicones, and then pick up four more of your 11 seed beads. Now take your needle and swing that back around through that first six millimeter bead, the opposite end of where you are coming out of with your thread and pull and that's going to surround one side of our two beads. We'll put that on the right just like that. Now we're ready to surround our other side and make it symmetrical. So let's pick up four more 11 O's, another four millimeter bicone and four more 11 O's. Now go back through your first six millimeter bead again. You're just making your loop surrounding the left hand side of those two rounds. So pull that nice and tight and that's what you should have, the beads surrounding those two nicely. Now we're ready to add on another one of our pearls. So pick up your next six millimeter pearl and slide that all the way down to your work. Now, just like we did before, we want to pick up four 11 O's one four millimeter bicone and four more 11 O's. We're gonna again surround the right hand side of our top two pearls and we're gonna loop around with our needle going through just the second and third pearl this time. We want those beads on the right hand side to surround those two pearls on that half and it's gonna lay right on top of the first group of seed beads and bicones that we placed. Now we're going to do the same thing, picking up four more 11 O's, one more four millimeter bicone, and four more 11 O's. 
bring your needle around and go through purls number two and three. Just like that. Pull that until it's right up there against your pearls and pull it nice and tight. So we've already used our three six millimeter pearls that are going to be on the left hand side of the front of our necklace. Now we're ready to move on to a larger size. So that means we're gonna be needing some more seed beads when we wrap around. Go ahead and pick up an eight millimeter round and pull that down to your work. And this time you're gonna pick up six 11 O's one four millimeter bicone, and then five 11 O's. So you should have the sequence right here on your needle, and that's what you're gonna be wrapping around the right hand side of your eight millimeter and six millimeter pearls. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these down. And now we're gonna swing around and go through the top two pearls, which happens to be our six millimeter and our eight millimeter. And we're gonna let those seed beads and the bicone wrap around the right side just like we did before. And you wanna make sure those seed beads are sitting on top of the prior row of seed beads. So let's imitate what we just did. We're gonna pick up six 11 O's, one four millimeter bicone and five more 11 O's. And pull those down. Position those on the left side of your pearls and go through those top two pearls once again. And then pull your thread so that everything tightens up. And that's what you should have. Now we're ready to put on our next eight millimeter pearl. And we can also go ahead and pick up six of our 11 O's, one of our four millimeter bicones, and six more 11 O's. Once again, pulling those down to our work. All right, we're gonna go through our top two pearls, which now are both eight millimeter. And make sure you're setting those seed beads right on the top of your other seed beads. And pull that nice and tight. And continue on, six more seed beads. Another bicone, and six more seed beads. Now we're gonna wrap this around the left side. Again, going through the top two pearls, our eight millimeters, and holding that while we pull. Now I'll repeat that step one more time like we just did with the six seed beads in the bicone and the six seed beads on both sides. And you may have to bend your pearls just a little bit to get your needle through. The bigger the pearls get, the more you have to do that. There's that side done. And then about to complete our other side before we move on to our 10 millimeters. Once again, going through our top two pearls to finish out the left side of that loop. And this is where we'll change our quantities a little bit yet again. First of all, we wanna string on one of our 10 millimeter pearls and bring that down to our work. And then you're gonna be picking up six 11 O seed beads, and this time one of your six millimeter bicones, and then five 11 O seed beads. So that's what you wanna have on your needle, and that will be going around our first 10 millimeter bead with the eight millimeter behind it. Go through the top two pearls, giving that a nice pull, and then repeating the same steps on the left-hand side. Six 11 O's, one six millimeter bicone, and five 11 O's. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those down so they don't slide off my needle. And then bend this just a little bit to get the needle through, and go through those top two pearls making sure our seed beads are sitting on the top and just position those where you want them to go. Now continue with the rest of your 10 millimeter beads, this time doing sequences of seven 11 O seed beads, a six millimeter bicone, and then seven more 11 O seed beads on either side. 
And once you get to that point, we'll meet back and continue on as... All right, so all the 10 millimeter pearls are on and we're basically gonna be mirroring everything we did on this side on the other side with our smaller graduated sizes. So just like we did before, let's go ahead and add on our next pearl, which is an eight millimeter. So on the other side, when we had these two sizes, we did five seed beads around the eight millimeter, and then we did the larger bicone, and then six 11 O's around the 10 millimeter. So let's mirror that. So we're gonna pick up five 11 O's, the larger six millimeter bicone, and then six of our 11 O seed beads. Let's pull those down and wrap around these two pearls. Do have to bend it quite a bit, as gently as you can. It'll go through, just take your time. Those larger 10 millimeter pearls are just a little bit harder to get through. And there we go, sitting our seed beads on top and let's do the exact same thing on the other side. So again, that was five seed beads one six millimeter and then six seed beads. Pulling those down. And then going through our pearls, let's bring on another eight millimeter. And that's where we did six and six seed beads. So go ahead and string those on along with a four millimeter bicone and six seed beads. All right, now we're gonna repeat that again. Six seed beads, bicone and six seed beads. And going around the left again, through our two pearls. There we go, and we're gonna repeat that again for our next eight millimeter. All right, now we're getting smaller again. Let's put on our six millimeter. And just like we had on the other side, this time we're gonna be doing five seed beads first, the bicone and then six seed beads. It gets a little bit easier to go through those pearls again as they're getting smaller. And another six millimeter. And this is where we're gonna end with the four seed beads, a bicone and four seed beads, just like we did on the other side. And putting on our very last six millimeter. Four seed beads, a bicone, four seed beads.
All right, now this is where we're going to be moving from our bead weaving material to our bead stringing material. I'm pulling out my soft flex medium beading wire. I'm actually going to leave it on the spool for now, and I'm going to be taking some of it off the roll enough for me to work with here. The amount that you will need is going to depend on how long you want your necklace to be. The necklace that I made up here is approximately 16 inches around, so it lays just at the base of my neck. And I will also be adding an extender chain probably later on so that it's adjustable and you can do the same thing if you want. But what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be getting this top row of bicones on some of this beading wire and then it's going to continue around with one strand of beads that ends up being all connected and ends up holding the woven portion together very nicely. I suggest you try to clip your beading wire at an angle if possible. That'll allow it to go through the bicones just a little bit easier. We are still going to be working with our 11 O's. I'm going to move this out of the way so I have a little bit more room. And the first thing we want to do is we want to go through this bicone that is on the right hand side. So just the bicone, and you'll wanna get your uh, beading thread out of the way, leave your needle on and everything because we're gonna come back to that. But just tuck that out of the way at the moment so you can work with your wire and pull that through just a few inches and then pop on a 11 OC bead to your beading wire. And you're gonna be putting an 11 OC bead in between each of your bicones. So I do suggest you try to use seed beads that are very similar in color to your beading wire. If you really wanna hide your beading wire, there will be some slight gaps, but what this will do is will allow for more movement in that curve that we want at the front of our necklace by just adding one seed bead in between each. If we added more than that, it would be too rigid and wouldn't curve nicely around the neck. Okay, so I'm adding on another seed bead and then going through that next bicone that I get to. I also suggest the uh, soft flex because it doesn't kink as easily as some of the other beading wires out there. It is going to hold its shape and you won't have a permanent bend in your wire that you don't want. So it helps to bend the beads a little bit when you're going through these bicones just to separate the seed beads from the opening of the bicone. So just bend them around, take your time, and pull so you can see what's starting to happen. So your woven portion is starting to be held together with the wire, and it's all gonna become one piece. Let's add another 11 -0. Going through the next bicone, and sometimes it helps if you pull on this end too, just to keep it a little bit straighter. and continue doing the same thing with those six millimeter bicones. Just one seed bead in between each. And continue the same process all the way till you get to your last bicone, and then we'll work on the next steps. All right, so our wire's gone through all those bicones, and now we are ready to work on the little side pieces that we have here. We actually want to take our wire and go through the two seed beads you get to right after that last bicone as well. And you'll need to pull out a few more of your four millimeter bicones if you want to achieve this look. I do want to mention you can do whatever you want on the edges of the necklace to finish it off. You can attach just the beaded portion to chain if you want to. You can bead this portion totally different. It's up to you, but today we're going to do, of course, what I did before in this necklace down here. So we're going to string on another bicone, another seed bead, another bicone, one more seed bead, one more bicone, and then three more seed beads onto our wire. And you can go ahead and pull your wire until you have the amount of length that you want to work with on this one side and go ahead and trim the other side off the spool. I will need at least five inches on either side of the beaded portion of the one that I'm making, but I'm going to give myself a good like eight or nine inches just to be on the safe side. So on the other side, you want to do the same thing. And first of all, I need to go through those first two seed beads that we get to right after that bicone where my wire is coming out. So let's go ahead and do that. And 
and pull that through. And now I can add the other bicones and seed beads. So we're going to do a bicone, a seed bead, a bicone. a seed bead and our last bicone and then three more seed beads all right so going back to the right hand side the side with your needle still on the thread you're going to want to do a little bit of reinforcing of the beads that are just on the end. So we're coming out of that purl just go to the right through those four seed beads that you get to also go through the bicone and go through the next seed bead. Now flipping that over, you see the seed beads that are right next to it on the back. You want to go through the seed bead that's right next to where you're coming out, which is kind of like this third one here behind that pearl. So go through those three seed beads and what that's going to do is tack both of those loops of seed beads together. Here you go. Now the next part is just about positioning our needle to get it to the right place. We need to go back around the right hand side of our loop here through our seed beads, go through those four, continue on going through the bicone and those four seed beads. Then go through that third pearl, you might have to bend it just a little bit to get through it. Then go through the four seed beads that are on the right as well as the next bicone and the next seed bead. So you're at the spot where you tacked it down before, and this time you actually want to go back up through the two seed beads on that top loop right next to it, and the bicone, and then go through just the two seed beads after the bicone. So that's your goal, is to get out of those two seed beads there on that end. And this is where you'll want to add on one seed bead, one four millimeter, one seed bead, a four millimeter, a seed bead, a four millimeter, and then three seed beads. So that's what you want to have on your needle and pull that down. And at this time you want to string on one of your crimp tubes, so pull that down. And you also need to go through that with your beading wire. So just do it with one stringing material at a time. First I did the thread, now I'm also feeding the beading wire through it. and it's sitting right there joining those two materials together. And that's where these crimp pliers come in really handy. If you have a pair of those, you can use them here and you're gonna be crimping that crimp tube, just like that, doing that on the back end of it and then folding those two sides in together and tightening it with the front side. So there we go, that is one of our crimp tubes done. We're gonna do another one, as you can see, like I did on here, that has a crimp cover on it to give us a little bit more reinforcement. I don't wanna just tack these down together with one crimp tube and call it a day. So following the pattern like I did in the other necklace, let's go ahead and pick up a six millimeter bicone seed bead, six millimeter bicone seed bead, and then finally a six millimeter bicone. Pull those down. And just like we did before, we need our wire to go through all those beads also. So if you just need to do it one at a time, that's fine, but get your wire through each of those beads too. There we go, and pull that, pull them both so that there's no gaps in either one of those stringing materials. And again, you wanna pick up a crimp tube and go through that crimp tube with both of these, the beading thread and the wire, and pull that crimp tube down to your work. Pull on both of those, the thread and the wire, and now you're ready to crimp that crimp tube. So I'm gonna crimp that with the back of the pliers, making sure it's sitting tightly against those beads and then folding with the top end of those pliers. Nice and tight, squeezing it good. All right, there we go. 
And now you can trim off this thread and we're only gonna be working with the beading wire for the remainder of the necklace to string on the uh, pearls like we have on this side. So I'm still using the 11-0 seed beads as little spacers in between the pearls. And on this necklace, I used 14 four millimeter pearls on each side. So we'll do the same thing with this one. So you're just stringing. You'll add on a pearl and then a seed bead and just alternate between those two beads all the way up your beading wire. And we're gonna end it with a seed bead. All right, now you wanna grab one of your wire guards and also another crimp tube. You'll put the crimp tube on the end there, right next to that seed bead, and string on your wire guard, going through one end of that, and then looping around through the other end with your wire, and also going through that crimp tube. Pulling that down so that you don't have any spaces or gaps, just like that. And we are ready to crimp this end. So back with the crimping pliers and crimping that final crimp tube. And it's ready for its crimp cover. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off this piece of wire just right at that crimp tube. And let's finish this up by putting on our crimp covers on each of these three crimp tubes that we need to cover up. I'm actually just using my same crimping pliers to do this. You can use any of your pliers that you're comfortable with. Popping that right over the crimp tube and then squeezing the two ends together so they come together and look like a bead. Do this gently. You don't want to press too hard to where you flatten it or get it misshapen and you kind of have to go in sometimes at different angles to get it to close up nice and around. So just do the best you can with that. And there we go. That's our first crimp cover on. Let's move on to the next one. Popping that right over and gently closing it up and just trying to shape it so that it stays as round as possible. And there we go, that's number two on, and we have one more to go. So that's one side of your necklace all done. Now just go ahead and follow the same process on the other side. You can either rewatch that portion of the video, or if you know what you're doing, you can go ahead and continue on and finish this side, and we'll meet back and take a look at the finished piece together. All right, now we just need to pop on our jump rings and our lobster claps, so go ahead and do that. And our last jump ring. All right, so here's a look at our finished necklace. I hope yours came out great too. I think this would look absolutely stunning in a white and crystal and maybe gold or silver combination, maybe even rose gold for, let's say, a wedding necklace. Final reminder, you can get everything you need, including the stringing material and beading tools at eurekacrystalbeads.com. I will have all the links for the materials I used down below for your convenience. And you can also use the coupon code ORCHID15 if you would like to save 15% off of your entire purchase. That is a one-time only use code. And like I said, there are some restrictions, including it not being good on sale prices. I will list those down below the video as well. Once again, I want to thank you all so much for being with me for another tutorial. Please feel free to leave me a comment or question down below. I always love to hear from you. I hope you'll stick around for much, much more, including more tutorials, unboxings, and finished jewelry updates, all kinds of beading fun. In the meantime, I hope you all have a fabulous rest of your day, a fantastic weekend, and as always, happy beading. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can check out the information section below this video for links to all my social media handles, recommended products, and my shop and blog at orchidnoble.com. Thanks for watching.